Who's watching this video in 2018? <laughs> I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make French onion soup. One more. French onion soup is a bistro classic. I used to make it back in the kitchen cooking days, but I made like five gallons at a time. So I'm going to riff on that recipe, try to make a smaller batch, but not following anyone's guidance. Not even Betty Crocker tonight. Hopefully the end product is edible, but I can't imagine I can f*** it up too badly considering it's onion soup. Soup made out of onions. Tonight, the first step is to open up a can of wine. I've never had a can of wine before. Did they like, did they not think about that? Or they probably did and they're like, well, someone's dumb enough to, <laughs> to do that. Let's see how it is, right out of the can. Hey, that's pretty good. That's a Pinot Noir under wood. No, sorry, under, er, er, ud. <laughs> the next vine is Laville Farm. I think that means Farmville. This is the cheapest wine I could find from France. And since it's French onion soup, figured might as well put France back in where it belongs, which is the pot. It almost tastes like nothing. Okay, so it's a school night like it normally is here. So before we even started filming, I started boiling this pot here with stuff I found in my freezer, which included um, like the carcass of a pheasant from Christmas time. Traditionally, French onion soup is made with beef stock. And so I got some beef shits that we're gonna throw in there now. I bought some bones. There they are, some bones, beef bones. I made to, sure to get ones a little bit of meatiness on them, specifically because I wanted more beef flavor. And I got some oxtails. Look at that oxtail, there's actually meat on that. Maybe we can eat that. So it's fairly uncommon to mix animal parts into a, a stock like that. I, I just figured let's get some of the fat out of that pheasant, which was very, very fatty, just to get this rolling. And we'll put the beef in and hopefully it just tastes like beef, like fatty beef. The uh, primary ingredient in French onion soup is the onion. And you can find all the letters of the word onion in the phrase, uh, old, new, uh, iridescent, older, newer. So uh, I'm gonna start with yellow onions. Our goal is gonna be to caramelize these. You can slice these however you like. If you struggle with cutting onions, you could uh, use a mandolin. In the restaurant days, I used to use a, a deli slicer. And the deli slicer, because it's like a big mechanical wheel, would just would just sling onion juice into the air. You know, we would cut like a f***ing case of onions and we would cry. We would just cry and cry and cry. We didn't have goggles. So what me and my uh, my cohort used to do is um, put plastic wrap around our whole heads like we did the Bob Lane. So I'm trimming up these onions first. I'm gonna start just with these yellow ones. Do not use sweet ones. They are hard to caramelize, apparently. Yellow ones, just fine. All these, uh, uh, these scraps from peeling they go right in the stock. Being careful not to splash anything on yourself. That'll help you get the onion flavor into your soup. Thinly is good, but again, because we have like just a, a kind of hilarious quantity of these, I would not worry about making them absolutely perfect. The goal is to cook these down for a long time until they're like a big caramelizy, messy, gooey, nonsensical pile of onion, onion, oniony goodness. So I got some butter, and I'm using a heavy potted pot, heavy, heavy potted pot pot. There it is. Also known as a Dutch oven. So we'll melt this butter. Here's a handful of shitty carrots I found in my fridge. That'll go in the stock. Nice. While we're waiting, let's prepare a bouquet garni. That's French, if you didn't know. You dumb, you big dumb dumb. Who he, who, hey, hey viewers. Who's watching this video who's a big dumb dumb? Let us know in the comments. All right, so a traditional bouquet garni is parsley, such as I have here. I'm just gonna, do one of those. Thyme, such as I have here. And then bay leaf, fresh bay leaf. I do not have that. But I, being the maverick of a cooking madman that I am, I'm gonna also add sage and a little bit of rosemary, because I think that would be good. This is gonna give it a flavor that tastes like plants, don't you know? Isn't that cute? Oh, <laughs> and nobody saw that. Everybody saw that. <laughs> All right, here we go. This it feels like too many herbs, but you know, who cares? All right, let's get these onions in. Those are our starter onions. And I don't think I'm gonna do any more than that because they will cook down, but I just think the pot's too small for us to do much more than that. Well, it's three onions, probably about a pound and a half. You think I should do another one? Let's do another one. Let's, let's throw in a red one for 
For whatever. For color. Red onion, it's for color. That's actually what we always used at the restaurant. And I don't know why. Like, it's that's not, that ain't conventional. Yeah, I think this red onion's really gonna take it up a notch. What notch is that, you say? Yeah, I don't know either. All right, there it is. So we gotta keep our eyeballs on this. You know, it's gonna take a long time, but we're just gonna constantly move them around. As they cook down, they'll start to caramelize. We'll probably have to add stuff. This is there's too many onions. Red onion was a bad choice. But I'll, I'll, I'll update you as we go. I mean, worst case, we'll get another pot going. No problem. Nothing is a problem ever. It's fine. We'll be back. Gonna go ahead and put the wine in a stock. So that was probably like 300 milliliters. While we're at it, let's put in a little bit of wine. Keep this bad boy rolling. Smash this sprouted garlic. Perfect for stock. It's got green shit, it's got paper, it's old. And it goes in the stock. Onion update. Ain't doing shit, Captain. Ain't doing shit. It is doing something. It's already starting to reduce in size, so we'll uh, keep you updated. I'm sure some people are having a f***ing stroke over watching me do this. But wait till we see the results, kids. And dum-dums. All right, so we got a couple options, kids. You could use stale as bread. We're making croutons. These are a thing that goes in the soup. Stale as bread is what I got here. If I can cut it, we'll use it. So far, so good. Okay. Traditionally, in a French onion soup, you got your little bowl and a crouton sit on top like that. It's like a little piece of toast. But you know what the problem with that is? It's hard as f to eat. You gotta eat a big old soggy bread shit. So here is my uh, my suggestion. Cut it up into bite-sized pieces. You're gonna melt cheese on it anyways. No one's gonna f no. Nobody. Plus, by uh, using stale bread, you're doing the environment a favor. You're saving the planet. You feel good about yourself. Tell the people stop using plastic bags and straws and shit. And then you become a plus three vegan. Well, whatever. In addition to the croutons, I've got this fresh bread of which we're gonna we're gonna cut some slices to try to make more traditional soup toppers. Also, probably gotta cut those in half too. All right. So here's our old shitty croutons. Which I already regret putting in this tiny bowl. This is olive oil. Shake them up. Oh, actually, just f it. I'm gonna do one of these. I'm gonna spread them out. And I'm gonna do another one of these. And one of these, which is a salt. One of these is a pep. Set aside. So I don't have the oven heated. 400. Should be fine. 350 would work too. These other things, we're gonna butter them. Spreadable butter. We might put cheese on them. Aren't I a good butter man? Am I doing a good job? Do you find this entertaining? <laughs> also salt, also pep, and also set aside. Deal with that later. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, some amount of time has elapsed, and our onions have reduced in size by approximately 50%. They're starting to work their way down. At this point, we can throw in some sugar, because Julia's child said that does something. I don't know if it does. It says it helps it caramelize better. At this point in the game, we're gonna have to like constantly move these shits around, otherwise they'll burn and brown, and you want them to caramelize. So keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, fill up your chalice. Which, by the way, this is a cinnamon chalice. This, uh, Marlena, when she moved away, she said we had to take one thing. I took this chalice. So this is the Bob Lena commemorative goblet. The Goblena. Here's to you, Bob. All right, let's shred some cheese. The ideal cheese would be Gruyere. Other cheeses that are frequently used for this purpose are provolone, Swiss cheese, sometimes Parmesan, Charlesburg, and others. We're using Swiss and Charlesburg. Couldn't even find Gruyere. I feel like with our onions, we're getting to the point where we just gotta keep reducing the heat. They look like a, a mess now, which means that they can just burn at any second. All right, here's our, here's our Jarlsberg. How the f am I gonna shred that? All right, so we can do the big shreds. The big shreds. Look at this bullshit cheese. Tastes good though. You know what? That's probably plenty of cheese already, but that's all right. We'll just keep shredding. All right, here's our cheese mixture that we're gonna transfer to a bowl for safekeeping. And I, I mixed it up a little bit, so it's a Swiss and Jarlsberg blend. Oh boy. We'll go ahead and Put some uh, some of these guys. A little cheese on each bread. Actually, a lot of cheese on each bread. You want a lot of cheese. Cheese is good for you, and it tastes good. Anyone else like cheese? Who's watching this show that likes cheese? Can I get a like and an amen for the cheese? Look at me, I like cheese. See, I pooped it. I'm gonna put these croutons, no cheese, right in the oven. I gotta remember to take out that pan. We'll probably do that in like 10 minutes, but we'll start with 5 minutes. Hold on to your butt. 
All right, so uh, this is an onion update. Check these out. We've reduced by over one half volume. So you can see that onion flood line. And we're starting to caramelize. So we're gonna keep them going. Like, just don't don't give up on them. Here's our first round of croutons. I think those are good. It's hard to tell if they're done because they're so stale. I'm gonna set them aside for now. We got a little, little birdie resident. This is Roberta. She's got two babies and an egg that I can have. Jesus. See how our stock's doing. A little nice brown color. Oh, it's got a really good flavor. Definitely needs salt, but we'll we'll get to that eventually. I think we just let, let this go as long as possible and keep our onions going. Hey, look at those things. It's so crazy. How do onions work? I don't know. We will continue to be back. Tonight's episode was requested by these people who happen to be viewers like you. It's a PGC fun drive. We're not gonna cook anything till you give us money or Trump cuts our funding. Hey. <laughs> do do do. Nobody is standing by to take your call. <laughs> Don't call me. All right, I can't take it no more. It's been long enough. Look at these onions. This is four onions. Four big ass onions became this little glop of caramelized onions. Can't take it no more. We can go longer. Can't do it. So, what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna strain our stock. So I got this bowl here, and I'm gonna try to get some of the big solids, like those oxtails, some of those big guys out of there before I throw it through the sieve. That's a beef bone, Jesus. Okay, that's probably good enough for where we're at now. Over at the sink, I've got my sieve and a cambro set up. So I'm gonna run it through. Not bad. Okay, so that yielded approximately a gallon of stock. So I suppose that's pretty convenient. There's a stock. Okay, so I got leftover stock, but that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. So we're gonna return it to heat and start to mix it up. And what you can see is that perhaps it wasn't enough onions. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't give a shit guys, I really don't. I mean if there's like some onions in there, that's gonna check the box for me. I don't know, your, your onion soup may vary based on what you do. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. Ah, oh, great flavor. Biggest thing it's missing right now is salt. Sea salt. I'm gonna give it a mix, taste again. It's getting better and better. The rest of the salt. I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, croutons, the big croutons in there. Try to melt that cheese and toast up the bread. So if you wanna cook more onions, you could add more onions. But I mean, I feel like there's enough that you're gonna know. That's an onion soup. We'll be back in a second. Not too long, don't worry. All right, here's our melty boys. I'm gonna show you two versions of this, neither of which you'll probably be able to replicate at home. But I don't care. So we'll ladle into our ramekins this soup. And by the way, thank you Chris Roberts for this beautiful gift of ramekins. I think that was very cash money of you. Sending these it was a nice surprise, very pleasant. So in the first one, we're gonna hit it with these edible croutons, bite-sized pieces. With number two, we're gonna hit it with that big boy. That's like the more classic approach right there. All right, now for both of these, you could, at this point, just add cheese. And then you put it under the broiler. Broiler that's in your oven. But, for the first time in PGC history, I'm gonna operate a fucking blowtorch. That's right, kids. Don't use this if you're dumb. We're gonna melt that cheese using a blowtorch action. And I usually find that I have success using these by using like somewhat circular motions around the soup. Looks like I might have overfilled this one a little bit. Who gives a f not me. Here's ball number two. All right, so here's our finished fancy cheese. You can get the same effect by broiling, but torching it seems to work pretty good. All right, let's try the big, big honker. Can I cut you, you dumb bitch? Hell yeah. Shit, that's pretty good. That's real good. But to counter that that was, I mean, that was easy. But just to show you, for this guy, you could just be like, okay, it's already ready to go. I'm not even gonna bother with that one. Well, that's how you do it, folks. Enjoy your French onion soup. It's just like dank onion flavor, beefiness, cheese, burnt cheese, brown cheese. Tastes great. It's great. It's a great appetizer. You probably want to eat something else with this. Or just eat like four bowls of it and call it a day. But that's how you do it. Fates food. Never thought you'd see me use a torch, did you? Kids. And dum-dums. Bye.